I'm Elizabeth Day. I'm an author and podcaster, and I'd just like to thank Tommy's for asking me today. I am delighted to welcome you all to Tommy's Miscarriage Matters event. This is a unique opportunity to meet the wonderful team behind the groundbreaking Lancet Miscarriage series, which we hope will change miscarriage care forever. Ari, could you start by telling us a little more about the research findings, please? What we um, found and what really stood out uh, were, uh, I guess, these three areas. The first was that miscarriage is uh, an event that goes well beyond the, the physical event. We know that in the past, miscarriage has been kind of treated in isolation. And we thought the, the key issue with miscarriage is to kind of work out what's the, the risk of recurrence. And that's pretty much where care stopped. But now we know that if a woman has a miscarriage, then she has great uh, risk of other complications in future pregnancies. So for example, uh, the risk of preterm birth is increased, the risk of stillbirth is, uh, is increased, uh, placental problems like abruption, these are all increased. Uh, not just that, we also know that miscarriage has profound mental health consequences for many couples. The second key message uh, that came out in our series uh, was there is a, this idea out there that miscarriage uh, is an inevitable event. It's the way that nature deals with a pregnancy that is not normal. Uh, whilst that is true for some pregnancies where the baby might have a chromosomal or genetic problem, we now know that there are many miscarriages which are loss of a pregnancy that is normal. I guess the third key finding was to dispel this you know, outdated, unfair practice, which is that a woman had to have three miscarriages before she would be offered any specialist care. Now we know that even after one miscarriage, the risk of uh, uh, the miscarriage, uh, a future miscarriage recurring, uh, the risk of preterm birth, psychological consequences, all of these go up even after one miscarriage. So what we are now saying is that every woman after every miscarriage needs to get appropriate care. Phil, can I come to you? What are your specific interests? My own interest is largely in the way in which um, the body interrelates with bacteria that live on and in our bodies. In the, in the 20th century, we used to think of bacteria as bad, and if you've got a bacterium, you have an infection. But in the 21st century, we know that we all live in an important symbiotic relationship with bacteria that live all over us. We need those bacteria for life. And, and what we have found is that miscarriage, and particularly miscarriage where the pregnancy is chromosomally normal, links to an imbalance in the bacteria which are living in the, in the genital tract. So I guess the question is, what can you do about it? now because we at the present time don't have a direct intervention. Well, one thing is that spacing out pregnancies is good because we know that after a pregnancy, particularly after the birth of a child at term, the bacteria don't go back to normal for perhaps up to a year or more afterwards. So having a decent space between your pregnancies help. Smoking changes the bacteria in your body. And we know that stopping smoking is a really good way to reduce the risk of, of miscarriage. I've got so many questions. One general one that I would like to pose is how difficult it is to research miscarriage, either because women, men, partners, couples don't necessarily want to talk about it and revisit it, or because to put it brutally, there isn't that much material to examine a lot of the time. Ari, can I direct that to you? So researching miscarriage has been difficult, Elizabeth, and I think there has been um, one profound reason, which was that it wasn't seen to be a problem where you could make a difference. You know, as I said earlier, miscarriage was thought to be one of those things. You know, it's nature's way of dealing with an abnormal pregnancy. So what can you do with that? That narrative has to change. We know that miscarriages have, many miscarriages have a reason, and the reason might be to do with the lining of the wombs. We know that there are hormonal reasons why miscarriages could occur. If there's a problem with, say, thyroid hormone level, 
or problem with the hormone progesterone, if there is diabetes, you know, all of these can contribute to the risk of miscarriage. We know that sticky blood disorders uh, can contribute to the risk of miscarriage. And then there is, you know, newer target um, conditions, like if there is a problem with the microbiome, as, as Phil mentioned. So all of these are potentially amenable to research and therapies uh, that could potentially reduce the risk of miscarriage in the future. And of course, Tommy's through, uh, you know, amazing uh, investment that they made about five years ago to say, you know, you guys get together, start to understand what's going on here, start to find ways to make a, a real difference. Uh, and I think that investment has made a massive difference. Siobhan, can I ask you about how these findings are changing the care that you offer, pa uh, offer parents in the Tommy Center? Um, so, so there's 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 several ways that, that it's changing care. So the first one is to um, is to make is to talk a lot about uh, general health. So to inform people what their body mass index is and what their ideal weight should be. Um, to spend a lot of time on smoking. To talk about diet, nutrition, and general lifestyle. Um, there was some um, uh, slightly um, unexpected findings from the review, which was that, for example, shift working was associated with miscarriage. And we can, that gives us an opportunity to discuss working patterns, uh, stress uh, and stressful lifestyles. Um, uh, so, so that's made a huge difference. Then the, the progesterone has made a huge difference. So we now know that if you've had a previous miscarriage and you bleed, it's important to get progesterone. And so my unit spends a lot of time giving out progesterone. And we also know how very important it is support people and identify people who clearly have um, some PTSD reactions to their miscarriage and make sure that they have counselling and support from other people. So the other thing we're doing is, is trials, trying to implement some of this into new causes and new treatments. One of the causes of miscarriage is that the lining of the womb doesn't identify the chromosomally abnormal embryo, so it allows them to implant. And that particularly happens in people who have recurrent miscarriage. So you get people that get pregnant very easily, but they miscarry because they're getting pregnant with chromosomally abnormal embryos. And then for the rest, the other 50%, you know, Ari has mentioned, I think it's important that probably the single most important way to help prevent a miscarriage is to get the pregnancy off to a really good start at the beginning. So there are a range of different uh, conditions like antiphospholipid syndrome, thyroid antibodies, maybe just having low thyroid levels, which are associated with a risk of miscarriage. There are some abnormalities of the womb which can be fixed, which associate with miscarriage. But even things like stopping smoking and being cardiovascularly fit and making sure that you're not either underweight or overweight, all of those things will help to get the pregnancy off to the best start. And therefore that miscarriage becomes preventable. And following on from that, Siobhan, for someone who's had recurrent miscarriages, what's the chance of a successful future pregnancy? Well, the, the chances are still very, very good. And I think that's the important take home message. Um, so in my, so my, for example, I do know the, the data for my clinic. So I have a recurrent miscarriage clinic where you have to have two or more previous miscarriages. And I know that 60% of people do take home a baby. So it's actually very, very high. But I also know that some people don't. And I think it's also important to be realistic. So to have realistic expectations. So if you've had more previous miscarriages or you're in an older age group, you are more likely to miscarry again. If you've had less previous miscarriages in a young, younger age group, you're less likely to. So I always say to people, it's important to have realistic expectations and then the support of a miscarriage clinic. Um, and, and then you've got a very good chance of future pregnancy. A lot of people are too scared to, to try again. And this is a really important message. Do not be too scared to try again. Make sure you've got realistic expectations of your next pregnancy. Make sure you've got adequate support in the next pregnancy. And that's what you need uh, to get you through this difficult um, early pregnancy period. Uh, we are really keen that uh, expert care, the appropriate care is given to every woman after every miscarriage throughout the UK, not just in Birmingham, Coventry or, or London. And to this um, end, Tommy's have been working with to develop a package of care that we hope that we can take to 
every clinic up and down the country. Uh, so this is very much um, a, a program of work that we hope to follow through in the coming um, uh, two or three years. And, and we would work with uh, healthcare providers up and down the country. We would work with policymakers. We would work with any stakeholder who is trying to make a difference to provide very high quality care throughout the UK. I think that one of the things that I struggle with going through miscarriage is a feeling of being alone or a feeling that people don't care. And you have put me right on that. And I really feel that you genuinely care and are doing everything that you can. And I just want to thank you on a personal level for that and for your incredible work. But the work isn't finished. This is only the start. So now we need to make sure the government listens and the NHS adopts Tommy's recommendations, because only then will we be able to truly transform miscarriage care for families across the country. And to do more, Tommy's needs your support. In just five years of Tommy's research, they've shown that miscarriage does have underlying causes, that there are tests and treatments which can give families hope, and that we can improve care. Did you know that Tommy's is one of the top five funders for pregnancy research? But for every one pound the NHS spends on pregnancy related care, just one P is spent on research. Compare that to cancer, which is 12P, or heart disease, which is 7P. And I think you'll all agree that this needs to change. With more investment in research, we can find the answers to prevent the devastation of pregnancy and baby loss.